Welcome back. So in this video, um, we're going to focus on the front end. We're going to learn about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on a high level. We're not going to actually write any code yet, but we will be seeing code for the first time. So there's two big things we want to know, which is uh, what's the difference between front end and back end? And then also, what's the difference between HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and what are their respective roles? So let's start by discussing front end versus back end. So when I go to a URL, let's say I go to Facebook, I hit facebook.com, I hit enter. And if you'll remember back to the video on how the web works, I create a HTTP request asking for facebook.com. And that goes to Facebook server eventually. Facebook then decides what page to send me back. So in the case of Facebook, it needs to figure out what images, what stories, how many likes they have, what friends I have, what posts are at the top, all my settings, my profile pictures, all the stuff that pertains to me. And then it sends it back to me, sends me HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and my browser displays that for me. So this diagram here kind of just, uh, explains the difference between front end and back end, where everything that I get back and that I see in the browser it's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's just the tip of the iceberg, but it is what my browser sees. It is the front end or the client side. It is constructed by the back end. Everything else that happens, all the logic, figuring out if I'm logged in, figuring out who my friends are, what photos I have, what posts I've posted, how many likes they have, all of that comes from the back end or the server side logic. So you can see there's a lot more here. The technologies, there's so many choices. On the front end, there's not. It's always HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. On the back end, you've got different languages like Python, uh, PHP, Ruby, JavaScript, actually, which is what we're going to use. There's different databases. You've got Postgres and Mongo and CouchDB and uh, MySQL and SQLite. And there's, there's so many choices. So it's a little intimidating. We're going to definitely talk a lot more about the back end when we get to that unit. But for now, just remember that the back end is what constructs the HTML and the CSS that is sent back. So let's take an example here. One of my favorite restaurants in San Francisco is called Lazy Bear. Here's the restaurant page. This page is always the same. I mean, it could be changed, but in order for it to be changed, the developer has to go into the HTML and manually change it. So basically, I refresh the page every time I get the same home page. I get the same frequently asked questions the same contact us page. That's not a bad thing, but it doesn't need to change. It's just a restaurant web page. However, the Yelp page for Lazy Bear is dynamic. It does change. So anytime a new review is written, it's gonna show up here. Every time, and let's say in this case, let's rate it. Five stars, I write a review. Uh, well, Yelp will probably reject my review, but if I wrote a review, it would show up here. Things are dynamic, they're happening at all times. So I could say, oh, that was a useful review. That was a funny review. And those votes that I've added are stored in a database. Something is happening, I'm interacting with this, and it is persisting. So if I refresh the page, now it's different. Not very different, but whereas before, I didn't think this was funny, now it remembers I thought it was funny. So basically, the point is, when I go to this page, I ask for this URL, Yelp doesn't just always send the exact same thing back. It's gonna figure out, okay, is the user logged in? If so, we wanna put his profile picture up here. Has he voted on anything? Yes, okay, let's make sure that you know we highlight it correctly, change the color, don't let him vote again, and so on. And then it constructs HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and it sends it back. So another example of a page that is definitely dynamic is Google News. Every time I refresh, I mean, almost every five minutes, something changes on here. Whether it's the weather over here, NFL scores, I mean, these are live updating. Maybe it's uh, the news story, there's breaking news, something changes. This is very, very different every time. However, this is always the same. So again, the difference is two things. One, static page versus a dynamic page. Both of them uh, are web pages. Both of them are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript coming back but one is uh, gonna change based off of some sort of server-side code, something on the back end. So I also like this analogy of a restaurant. So if you imagine you go to a restaurant, you sit down, let's say you order a steak. When you order that steak, you're making a request that goes back to the kitchen. 
The kitchen prepares everything for you. That's sort of the back end. It decides what ingredients to get, how long to cook them, plates everything on a plate, and then a waiter or waitress comes and brings that to your table. So it's very similar. You make a request. The chef or the kitchen is the server, this part of the iceberg that is concocting everything, cooking it, putting it together, and then finally it is sent back to your table, which is you on the client side. So now let's break down those three pieces, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we're going to go into a lot of detail on each of those components. Uh, there are separate sections and units, but HTML, let's start there, stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Basically, um, imagine that, and this is what actually happened in the early days of the internet, there was no standardized way to send information and to send documents. So initially, you know, the, the internet was used to send, uh, to communicate uh, between universities and colleges and also as a military tool. So let's just say I wanted to send a, I wanted to send this to a friend. I need to say, okay, this is bolded. These are little bullet points. I've got some text and quotes around this. I need a way to break that down and describe it to send to somebody else. And the solution was HTML. So HTML is it's actually the easiest thing that we're going to learn. Not to say that it's insanely easy, but it is very simple in that we just describe what we want. And what you write is what you get. So HTML is often referred to as the nouns of a web page. It's the structure. Some people say the skeleton. Basically, you say, put an image here, put a bullet point here, put um, a heading here, put a slightly smaller heading just below that. It allows you to describe the structure of a page. CSS, on the other hand, is how we describe the style of a page. I need HTML to use CSS. CSS on its own doesn't really do anything at all. Every single web page has HTML. Some web pages don't have CSS. Some don't have JavaScript. It's not mandatory. HTML is. So CSS, cascading style sheets, we'll learn exactly where that name comes from uh, in a little bit. Basically, it styles existing HTML. So you can say things like, make all those bullet points green, give the first image a yellow border, give the last image a big pink border with dashes through it. It's often considered the adjectives of a web page, or some people would say the skin to the HTML uh, skeleton. And the last piece here is JavaScript. JavaScript is probably, it's definitely the most complex thing out of these three. It's how we add logic and interactivity to a page. So with CSS and JavaScript, we can make a beautiful looking site, but it's not going to do anything really. We can do simple animations, but we can't um, load data from somewhere else. We can't make things interactive. We can't add logic or have a game. With JavaScript, we can. You know, some of the examples I have here are do some math, um, change color when the user clicks, load new data from Twitter, get the current weather or the current NFL scores. If uh, HTML is the nouns, CSS is the adjectives, then JavaScript is the verbs or the actions on a page. So I have this uh, all wrapped up nicely in a code pen. So code pen is a wonderful site. We're not going to use a whole lot, but because we haven't really started writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I'm going to use this as an example. And what this does, it lets you just write simple pages in the browser. So we don't have to use sublime text. We just write it in the browser and I can share it with you very easily. I have three sections, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Again, the code itself is not what's important here. It is the concepts. So let's take a look and I'm going to actually get rid of my CSS. I'm going to get rid of my JavaScript and you'll see what we're left with. Plain black and white structural material. I'm specifying my content. So these are my words and I'm wrapping that content in specific structural elements. So an H1, and again, this is one of those times, don't worry about these specific syntax. We have so many videos ahead that are going to go into detail on each one of these. But basically this is saying make big text right here. This is saying make a list and make an individual list item that says make me a bullet point and another one that says make me another bullet point and then make a button that says make me a button here, as you can see. So on its own, that is just the structure. So now let's go add our CSS back in. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm saying make the H1, which is here, 
make it purple. So we could change that to be green. And it changes to green. And I'm also saying make the button have a border, have a background color, and a text color of white. So we can change that to be green text color. It's uh, hard to see, but that changes to green. I can give it a much bigger border, 20 pixels, as you can see there. So that's our adjectives. And the last piece is our JavaScript. So without JavaScript, that button does nothing. Now what we've done is written JavaScript that says when the user clicks the button, pick a random color and change the background color here to that random color. So I'll show you that. I can click and I get a random color. So if I got rid of this JavaScript and I tried to do that again, nothing happens because I don't have any verbs. It's just nouns and adjectives. It's just the structural skeleton and a little bit of skin on top. As I add my JavaScript in, I can add the logic. So JavaScript's really important. This isn't exactly what you would do most likely on a real production site, but you would have maybe a game. You might make Minesweeper. This might be Facebook chat. It might be a form to sign up for a page. You use JavaScript to make it interactive. So again, um, I encourage you to play around on CodePen. You have the link to this and explore a little bit. There's no rush to move ahead to the next video. Try changing some of these colors if you want. Try changing some of this. Don't focus on the code. It's just fun to play around with, but there's no pressure to understand any of this aside from a very high level overview of what HTML does, what CSS does, and what JavaScript does. All right. Dear viewers, PDF notes related to this video are available in description box. Thanks for watching.